Welcome to Sheboygan County Government, working for you. I'm Adam Payne, Sheboygan County Administrator and host of this program. And today we're very pleased to have Jim Holbert with us, our Planning Director. Jim, welcome. Thanks, Adam. I'm very pleased to be here. Jim, believe it or not, has been with Sheboygan County now going on three years, and we were just saying off air how quickly the time flies. Jim, please begin by sharing a little bit about yourself and, and your background. Mm -hmm. Well, I've been doing this kind of work for, gosh, more than 30 years, believe it or not. I find that kind of difficult to believe. I started out actually teaching environmental science in high school, but then I got a fellowship to attend graduate school in environmental studies and took advantage of that. And after that, I worked for the Minnesota Pollution Control Agency, directing statewide industrial solid and hazardous waste programs. I've also worked as a planning director for two other Wisconsin counties, and the duties were somewhat similar as they are here. The major differences were we also had comprehensive county zoning, so we were also involved in just about every land use decision. We were also heavily involved in recycling and solid waste issues and hazardous waste issues as well. I've also worked for the Veda Corporation and directed global environmental and sustainability affairs for that fairly large company. Um, I've also owned and operated my own environmental consulting firm for a number of years, and I managed a small environmental consulting firm on the island of Guam, and from there um, we did work all over the South Pacific. And um, weather-wise, it's quite a bit different than here, but I enjoy being here as well. As you know, Jim, one of the, one of the many things that I really appreciate about you is the tremendous breadth of experience that you bring to the position you've as soon as you walked in the door, you hit the ground running, you continue to make wonderful things happen for Sheboygan County. And, and as you think about your breadth of experience and the different places you've worked and the challenges you've tackled, as a relative newcomer to Sheboygan County, what's your, what's your impression of our planning director, our planning department? What's your impression of Sheboygan County? Well, first of all, the reason I took the job was because of you, um, partially, and then also um, the wonderful staff. We have a great staff. I think the taxpayers benefit from a very dedicated, highly motivated, and um, excellent staff in the department. Sheboygan County itself is a fantastic place to live and to work. It's beautiful. It has a variety of um, you know, recreational pursuits. Um, we've got Lake Michigan, the Kettle Moraines, the Sheboygan Marsh, Kohler Andre State Park, and a lot of other wonderful facilities, John Michael Kohler Art Center, um, the list just goes on and on. So Sheboygan is, in fact, uh, a wonderful place, and that's one of the reasons why I took the job. Yeah, well, it's good to have you here. I hope it continues for some time to come. Thank when you think about the planning department, and as you said, you've got some excellent staff mm -hmm. to work with, please share um, you know, a high-end overview of what the primary roles and responsibilities are of your staff. Mm -hmm. Well, we've got two planning technicians, a land use planner, and the land use planner is involved in the smart growth planning process that's mandated by the state of Wisconsin. And we have two zoning administrators and they're involved in shoreland, floodplain, and wetland zoning. We have a code administrator and uh, the code administrator is kind of, the, I guess you could say, the lead person in those um, zoning issues. We have a non-motorized transportation component. Um, we have three people working in our non-motorized transportation effort. That's a $25 million grant that we were lucky enough to get from Congress. Um, we have an assistant planning director and um, I th oh, and two mapping technicians, two mapping people with our geographic information system. Um, again, these are all highly skilled people and do a great job. So a total number of? Oh, I'm not sure. It looks like about 15 people, perhaps, <laughs> something like that. <laughs> Give or take. Give or take a few, yeah. and I hope I didn't forget anybody. Yeah, well, as, as you said, you have an outstanding staff, and I know you've done some comparison to other counties with similar responsibilities and, and simu similar uh, population bases. And, and if I recall, our staff is actually a little leaner than many out there. Yeah, for the population size of the county and the scope of work that we do, we actually are managed to do quite well with a fewer number of staff. And that's good news for taxpayers because we do, I think, an excellent job in fact, um, better job than some other counties who look to us as a model at far less cost. Now you touched on some of the 
the programs and services that the planning department is responsible for, but you in particular have really gotten involved with some exciting initiatives, ventures. Please touch on that. Sure. Um, one of the first things I got involved in was the, the plans to construct the observation tower at the marsh. And I'm very pleased to announce that we are under construction and we should be having an opening ceremony by the middle of November and maybe a, a, a bigger dedication in the spring. Um, so that was an exciting effort. I've also been involved in um, the Amsterdam Dunes project. That was an attempt to um, acquire and preserve about 325 acres of some really good lands um, with very unusual habitats. Unfortunately, we didn't get the grants that we had hoped for for that project. I'm still working on that, so I'm keeping my fingers crossed that that'll be successful. Um, the county had tried three previous times to get a smart growth grant, and for one reason or another, the state didn't see fit to award us the money, and so we tried again, and we did get the smart growth grant, about $238,000 that um, will enable the, the county to undertake this mandated program. Um, I also get involved in just about everything else that the, the staff do. Um, another project that I've recently got involved in, thanks to your encouragement, I guess you could say, would be the dredging of the Sheboygan River. And that's an excellent project with, I think, profound environmental and ecological impacts. And I think we can accomplish a lot through that. Um, hazardous waste. Um, I. I guess we in the last three years have greatly increased that program and we have far more participants. We collect far more hazardous waste now than we used to. Um, we also instituted in partnership with Healthy Sheboygan 2010 and the Sheboygan Police Department and other law enforcement and medical folks a wonderful waste medication collection project. And I mean this with all sincerity. I have 22 department heads that I have the pleasure of working with, 22 uh, departments with vast roles and responsibilities, but when it comes to the team that we have in place, of course I want people that are making good things happen or are striving mm -hmm. to, to stir the pot and, and improve our community. And Jim, I can't thank you enough for the many things you have been involved in. And I'd like to take these one by one a little bit. First, sure. st starting back with the tower. Mm -hmm. uh, as you know, I participate on the Friends of the yes. Marsh, as does Keith Obler, uh, County Board Supervisor Keith Obler and Supervisor Jim Baumgart. Uh, Lil uh, Pipping is the chair of that. She does a wonderful job. But, you know, your interest and your enthusiasm for it and your staff certainly have contributed to this, as you said, construction's underway. Yes. Give our viewers a little bit more of a flavor of the Sheboygan Marsh and just why this is going to be so spectacular. Well, the Sheboygan Marsh is a fabulous place. And being a, a newcomer arriving here, one of the first things I did, of course, is study the area. And, I guess I'm still amazed at uh, the gem that the Sheboygan Marsh really is, 14,000 acres, and I think it's taken for granted by the people who live here. But it's very unique ecologically, culturally, the, the historic aspects, the paleontology, the archaeology, uh, it's, a, it's a fabulous place. And so the tower will bring more visitors to the marsh, and we have other plans after the tower is constructed. Um, to further increase the number of visitors. And it's also highly used by environmental education classes. On average, we may get more than 3,000 children there in the summer to study outdoor recreation and environmental education. We would like to make that a lot higher, maybe get four or 5,000 children here, and also adults. And so we'd like to partner with universities and other academic institutions, other environmental learning centers um, like Maywood, and Camp Wicota and, and many others to actually increase the, the awareness of the marsh. Um, so the tower will bring more people on. And I think one of the coolest aspects of the tower is that we're also going to have a, a video camera, in fact two cameras on the top. One will be for handicapped people that may be a little intimidated from climbing up 80 feet of that tower. Um, they'll be able to sit at the, the marsh lodge and actually um, observe the tower in the comfort of, of the restaurant. Um, the other thing would be a, a webcam. We also have plans, as you know, to put a webcam on top of the tower. And so that means maybe a Sheboygan County resident might be visiting China and plans to come back to Sheboygan and duck hunt in the marsh. And that person then can log on and um, check out the marsh from afar. Right. And of course, the educational value for school children who might want to 
uh, go online at school without even having to go out there that day. Good point. Excellent. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's going to be the tallest wooden tower in the state of Wisconsin. And if people are, st are you know, interested in this, obviously they can go out to the Sheboygan Marsh and take a look at it as it's being constructed. Yes. But if they want to make a contribution, as you well know, we've done this uh, by raising donations throughout the county, I think about 300,000 now. And, and if folks want to contribute, how do they get more information? Well, first of all, we'd encourage more contributions because um, thanks to Joseph Schmidt and Sons Construction, they have undertaken the construction of this, um, even though we may not have quite enough money to finish. And so further donations are encouraged and for donations, um, $1,000 would bring, would bring you um, notice on a step. Um, for $50 to $100, you could get a brick beneath the tower. You could have your name or any um, saying or commemoration you might wish. Um, and then also for the educational components of what we'd like to start accomplishing, or I should say further at the marsh, I think those donations will go a long way for that. Yeah, nice overview. Another area you've been very active in, your department, providing leadership with the non-motorized program, trail enhancement development throughout Sheboygan County. I know we both take pride in many um, residents of this community do of the old Plank Road Trail, yes. which was established many years ago. Right. But uh, as you of late have pointed out to your uh, resources committee and others in the community, it takes money to keep these trails maintained and, and enhance them. Uh, please tell us a little bit about the Old Plank Road Trail mm -hmm. and some of the concerns you have about making sure that we, we keep these trails available for not only our residents, but tourists. Sure. The Old Plank Road Trail is another gem. I mean, that's a pioneering effort in Wisconsin. Um, Planning for that started, gosh, I think at least 30 years ago, construction maybe 25 years ago, and it truly is a multi-use path, multi-use trail. Um, we have users year-round from the snowmobile folks in the, in the winter, maybe four to 5,000 snowmobile trips, um, bicyclists and pedestrian and moped riders in the warm weather, and that's approximately 34 to 35,000 user trips. We also have horseback riders, um, horse-drawn carriages, segways. Um, so it truly makes it a, a multi-use trail. The, the presence of mopeds makes it unique in Wisconsin that we also have mopeds from a, a you know, long heritage of use on the Old Plank Road Trail. Unfortunately, um, when the Old Plank Road Trail was constructed as a cost savings measure, it wasn't constructed necessarily the way it should be. In other words, the, the proper gravel base um, allegedly was not installed. And also we found that um, some of the, the trees and the brush that was cut was buried where the, the asphalt is now located. As a result, this material rots and decomposes and subsides. And so we have issues with some of the pavement cracking and we have sinkholes, we have washouts. And long-term maintenance of these facilities is something that's commonly overlooked. It costs an awful lot of money. And so we're in the difficult situation where, you know, the county board is very supportive, but because of all the other priorities, we have a fairly limited amount of money. That has to go a long way. That money doesn't begin to cover the, the maintenance needs of just the old Plank Road Trail in itself. We've tried to raise funds through grants, and I've been successful in getting some grant funding through the DNR Stewardship Program. Um, the county board also has um, helped with the financing through some bond um, money. But we st we're, we're still a long ways away. And so one of the things that we'd like to do is, um, like many other counties, and indeed like the entire state of Wisconsin does on their bicycle, um, trailways is to adopt a very modest user fee to help pay for maintenance, not only on the, on the Old Plank Road Trail, but our boat landings, the Marsh Lodge, and other fine recreational facilities that we have. What kind of response have you received from the uh, Planning and Resources Committee for Sheboygan County on the proposed fee? No, that's a really good, a good question and a good point. I have nothing but admiration and pride and satisfaction in working with our Planning and Resources Committee. These are dedicated people. They're very knowledgeable, very helpful. They spend a great deal of time. In fact, when, when people are newly appointed the, to the Planning Committee, they're amazed at how much time it takes and how many things we're involved in 
and how we interact with the public in a wide variety of issues. So the Planning and Resources Committee are very supportive. In fact, um, they, uh, they consider these fees as absolutely critical and mandatory for the future of our recreation facilities. If we don't have user fees, the only other option would be to increase property taxes even more. Our citizens tell us they don't want to pay any more in property taxes, and in fact, as we all know, Sheboygan County can take a great deal of pride in your efforts and the county board efforts to not only keep our taxes low, but actually to reduce them, and I think that's, that's admirable. But at the same time, then, that creates problems in funding programs like discretionary recreation programs where um, you know, 100% of the taxpayers pay for these facilities, but only 20 to 30% of the population uses them. And so that's why we think um, having some sort of a modest user fee to help pay for these programs for the people that actually use them is a fair proposition. Right. And I know you've been fielding a lot of questions on this and have, have had open discussions about this. And any time you talk about raising taxes or raising a fee, it's controversial. But what I've been very pleased with is if you take the time to study it and look at the situation and the long-term goal of having you know, a, a wonderful rec trail for future generations to also be able to use, uh, money doesn't grow on trees. And that, re that, that financial support needs to come somewhere, and I think you've laid out a real fair proposal. And as you mentioned, the Planning and Resources Committee is behind it. Yes. Ultimately, we'll see if the full county board supports it here in the near future. Right, and, and if we don't get support, then we have to come up with other options, or um, you know, we, we don't do the maintenance to the level that, that we would like. As you know, we've also recently extended the interurban trail, and I just got a, p a complaint a couple days ago that we're starting to have maintenance issues on the, the older portion of the interurban trail that was constructed four or five years ago. All of a sudden now we've got willow trees that are sh sending shoots under the asphalt, and they're breaking the asphalt and coming up in the middle of the trail. And again, these things cost money to repair and last year because of heavy rains we had a washout of the interurban trail again that takes money that's an unexpected event so you never know when something happens that's going to take money that we don't have in our budget another area you've been very active in providing some excellent leadership is hazardous waste collection mm -hmm. and though we've had a program for a number of years there yes. you've really brought some new juice to it and and I think help gotten the word out uh, why it's so important to get this hazardous waste cleaned up and properly dealt with. How does the program work and what kind of mm -hmm. response have you received? Well, the response is overwhelming. Um, last Saturday, October 10th, for example, in Plymouth, um, we normally get 40 to 60 vehicles participating on a fairly cold October Saturday morning. We actually had 250 participants last time. Cars, trucks, pickup trucks, rental trucks, trailers. Um, we filled, completely filled a, a large semi truck and a dumpster. Um, we were told by nine o'clock in the morning we were already over budget um, and it lasted until afternoon. Um, so we collected a, a large amount of materials. Quite frankly, because you know, we have a limited budget and thankfully the county board increased that last year to $100,000. But we were already near or at the end of that budget, and so we didn't even advertise the October event much. Um, and even though we didn't advertise it much, we still got a far greater um, response rate than that was anticipated. Um, we partner with Veolia Special Services. They do a, a wonderful job. And our biggest cleanup, our biggest hazardous waste collection is always in May. We're always um, in two different places, and, and in 2010, it'll be May 14th and 15th. Um, we, we do get state money. Again, we were successful in getting some state grants to help us with that. We're, we, we formed, we're part of a regional, multi-county hazardous waste informal working group, I guess you could say. That's Manitowoc, Calumet, Fond du Lac, and Sheboygan, and because of our partnership, uh, we're very successful in getting grants. And some of our viewers may have heard you just say, $100,000, we're spending $100,000 a year on hazardous waste collection. Um, you know, that might blow some people away, but 
Put that in perspective a little bit. If we don't have this program, if these contaminants are not collected, and please give some examples of what you are collecting, sure. what could the cost otherwise be? The cost of just one spill could far exceed the cost of collection and disposal. Um, it's surprising. Um, some people are, are dumbfounded when they realize we're still collecting DDT, even though DDT was banned in the, the mid-70s. People still find that in their barns or their, their um, you know, buildings on their farms or whatever. Every once in a while, we still find very old formulations of arsenical pesticides that were used during the Depression. Um, so we're talking about arsenic and DDT and some other fairly dangerous things. And again, you know, we're blessed with our waterways, our rivers, our ponds, our, our lakes, indeed Lake Michigan. And if some of this material was improperly disposed of or spilled or dumped along a roadside, we'd have a, a very profound environmental catastrophe that would cost us hundreds of thousands, if not maybe millions, to clean up. And so, yes, 100000 might sound like a lot of money, but um, Wisconsin does not have a hazardous waste landfill. Wisconsin does not have any dedicated hazardous waste disposal facilities, so we have to go out of state. Most of our stuff goes to Port, Ar Port Arthur, Texas for incineration. We've also, from time to time, used the incinerator in Sauget, Illinois, or a landfill in Alabama. So our disposal options are extremely limited. Again, people are surprised to learn that it might cost more per gallon to get rid of a gallon of lead-based paint than it costs to purchase it. It might cost us 20 to $25 a gallon to get rid of a gallon of paint. Hmm. This is a great segue for something I wanted to spend a little time on the, on the few minutes we have remaining, and, and that is the Sheboygan River and, yes. and the cleanup that's been discussed for 25 years or better. You know, talk about contaminants and cost. Mm -hmm. Uh, please set the stage for us a little bit. What's the latest with cleaning up the Sheboygan River and the, the harbor area? Well, as a background, back in the, the mid to late 1970s, it was discovered that PCBs, polychlorinated biphenyls, are, were, were found in the sediments of the river, among other things like heavy metals and PAHs, polyaromatic hydrocarbons. And these things um, are very dangerous in aquatic environments. They build up in fish tissues. Anything that eats the fish um, could have profound health impacts, wildlife or humans. As a result, there's a fish consumption advisory. We're not supposed to eat the fish in the Sheboygan River, especially children and pregnant women. Um, PCBs are like DDT, they're persistent, they're not found in nature, they're only man-made chemicals, so there's nothing in nature to break them down. Um, for 25 years, there's been different um, plans, different um, ways of thinking on how to get the, the contaminated sediments out of the river. Um, during the last year or two, they've been successful in cleaning up some of the, or, or most of the contaminated sediments in the upper river. And now we've got the lower river and the harbor. Um, and so we are partnering, we're actually helping the city of Sheboygan and the, the, the contractor and many other people involved to finally get rid of this, this contaminated sediment. We're working under two programs that are funded and taken care of by the US EPA in Chicago. One is the Superfund program. And they're looking at um, taking away maybe the, the top two feet of contaminated soil. Another program is called the Legacy Act, and if we're successful in writing a grant, they will be able to, under this program, um, hopefully go down another 12 or 14 feet of, of sediment in the harbor. We also have to find a place to put that sediment. The really contaminated sediment, over 50 parts per million of PCB is taken to Michigan as a hazardous waste. Anything under 50 parts per million isn't considered hazardous, although it's still a concern environmentally. But we're looking at different options to economically and environmentally safely dispose of it within Sheboygan County. And we would go way overboard in engineering and design and monitoring and pollution risk liability for any sediments left in Sheboygan County. And these contaminated sediments act far differently in terrestrial environments than they do in aquatic environments. And when you say that in layperson language, my understanding is the, the PCPs, PCBs will, they actually join up with the soil. 
That's they correct. Don't. These very fine sediments, clay particles, or the, the silt particles, um, the, the PCBs adhere, or it's called attenuation, they adhere to these very fine soil particles by electronic charges, and it doesn't move through the water column like other pollutants might. Um, the only way PCBs will leave the contaminated sediments when they're in a disposal cell would be if uh, for some reason we would get very strong acids or alcohol, alcohols or something like that involved that may be possible in a dedicated landfill, but certainly not at all probable in a, a facility that would be constructed only for the safe disposal of sediments. And again, if we are successful in locating a sediment disposal area in Sheboygan County, we would require a very long-term monitoring, pollution risk abatement insurance, just in case there's any sort of pollution or any sort of problem, it would be immediately cleaned up with a guaranteed pot of money. Furthermore, we would not only have monitoring wells, which others don't even find necessary, we would also install what are called lysimeters, and these are devices that would actually determine or detect any pollution from the bottom of any um, deposed sediment before it even got into the groundwater. Um, and so we would go far more and, and require greater guarantees to protect the environment and the neighbors than I think any other site for low contaminated PCB cells. And would. as we're both aware, if we're able to do that uh, within Sheboygan County, we could uh, literally save millions of dollars that could go back into the cleanup and the local match that we have to have. So for over 25 years, sadly, Sheboygan's had the designation of being a Superfund site. That's correct. With a contaminated river that no doubt does not contribute to economic development, nor it's, is it safe for people to eat the fish in those waters. After 25 years, we're finally looking at an opportunity and next year going to be working together with the city and the DNR and the federal government to get this cleaned up. I mean, this is big news and this is fantastic news yes, for Sheboygan is. County. Yes, it is. And, you know, our sport fishery industry here is very big and, you know, it's, it's a wonderful, great group of people. And, and some folks don't realize that the, the source of PCB contamination in Great Lakes fish come from rivers like the Sheboygan River. And so not only is, is it important from an environmental perspective, but if we can get that river dredged out, get the PCBs out of there, then maybe the core can continue to dredge it like they used to. Um, and they stopped doing that in 1968 or 1969. Again, when the river depths are restored, we can get larger ships, we can get um, cruise ships, we can get the tall masted sailing vessels. Um, economic development potential for the city is, is greatly increased. And the city staff, Paulette Enders, <coughs> Mayor Ryan, and others in the, the city are doing a great job in, in leading this effort that we're assisting in. Jim, I want to thank you so much for your time today. Covered a lot of ground in a short period of time. It really flew, and if you're interested in learning more about the activities of the planning department or some of the, the initiatives that Jim's a very important part of, please don't hesitate to contact Jim Hulbert, again, at the Sheboygan County Planning Department. Jim, thank you to you and your staff for the very important and good work that you do. Thank you, Adam. On behalf of the Sheboygan County Board, I'm Adam Payne. Thank you for joining us today. We appreciate your time and interest. Next month, our new Health and Human Services Director will be here, Tom Egebrecht. Tom's been doing a great job at Health and Human Services. And until then, thanks for joining us.